initially I was given uh, a diagnosis which said you could be dead in as little as six months. I had uh, hepatitis C. I had something amiss with my liver, which at first was a shadow, then was diagnosed as a tumor on the crown, which could be excised, and then became 15 tumors, depending upon who you asked. One of the problems with HCC is it's silent. You really don't know. So by the time they find the cancer in your liver, it's too late. Different sets of eyes, after looking at a zillion different tests, came to completely different conclusions. My diagnosis was so botched by so many people. It's hard for me to overstate the despair, the despondency that I felt during that period of time. I spoke to friends of mine, and one of them had a transplant performed by Dr. Charles Miller. He said, Charlie's the best. You gotta go see Charlie. Jerry's story, like so many, is about ability to handle uncertainty. Jerry was presented with a life-threatening problem, and the way the system worked elsewhere, it actually magnified the uncertainty with the lack of communication, lack of uh, cohesiveness of the team. What he found here was a different situation. In one day, he met the surgeon, the hepatologist, the oncologist, the radiologist, all of which reviewed his case in the morning. That afternoon, the four groups sat down, discussed the case, came to a consensus, charted a plan, and presented it to him the next day. For him, I think it created a sense that everybody was on the same page, rowing in the same direction, and provide for him a sense of reassurance that we were on his side. So what happened here was that here they got it right. He said, we're gonna use this test, it shows two tumors, and we're gonna present this. You'll be listed, and two to three months later, you'll be transplanted. And in fact, I was transplanted two and a half months later, so he couldn't have been more spot on. All I wanted was a pitch to swing at, and nobody was gonna give me a pitch except for here. This is unlike any place we have ever been before. You talk about the Cleveland culture. We had heard it was patient-centered care. We didn't have any idea what patient-centered care was until we got here. It really is patients first. The light here, the pictures in the hallway, the architecture, everything to soothe all your other senses. When you're walking around with this burden of a diagnosis, not knowing what's gonna happen, not feeling so desperate. The physical plan does everything that it possibly can to make you feel better, to soothe all your other senses. I have a psychiatrist friend of mine and he tells me that very often patients break down into two groups when they've gone through something as arduous as, as what we've gone through. One group, they want to forget about it, it's awful, they don't ever want to revisit it, and they want to do their best they can to pick up the pieces, go on with their life, and pretend it never happened, which of course is very understandable. And then there's another group, which is the group that we are in, which is, wow, who do I thank? How do I thank? We have an unrepayable debt. Research in the first place is what saved Jerry's life. Ongoing research will, A, hopefully keep it going longer than it might have otherwise and hopefully make it available to more people. Jerry was fortunate. He got an organ. But we all know there's a limited supply. So one of the things that their very generous donations are funding is some very, very novel research into how to resuscitate organs that we now can't use and to make them usable and expand this real game changer technology to make it available for more people. For me, it's a miracle. I mean, it's overused and maybe trivialized word, but for me personally, not overused and not trivial. Uh, there's a strong likelihood I would, would not be here, if, if not virtual certainty, were it not for the Cleveland Clinic. Mm -hmm.